Hare Krishna. So, we all are back again to our seminar after one day's break. In our two previous sessions, we discussed about the meaning of the term Founder Acharya and while discussing that point we recognize the importance of an institution in order to spread Krishna consciousness effectively throughout the world to continue the propagation of Krishna consciousness especially after Srila Prabhupada's disappearance it is absolutely important to have an institution because when a great personality comes it is with his spiritual potency that he creates uh, an incredible wave he, he creates a tremendous influence so when he is present on the planet the propagation of his mission becomes a natural phenomena but then to continue it in his absence there is a need it is an it is essential to have a have an institution because without the institution the mission would fall apart so it is not only that Srila Prabhupada saw the need Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur saw the need Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur saw the need and even before them Srila Jiva Goswami saw the need Jiva Goswami emphatically wrote and even gave a structure hmm, called the Royal Assembly uh, of the Worldwide Vaishnavas. Isn't it an incredible foresight? <laughs> Jiva Goswami, about 500 years back, he is uh, giving a structure. Uh, Visha Vaishnav Raj Sabha the Royal Assembly of the worldwide Visha means world and Vaishnav uh, the Vaishnavas of the entire world the assembly a royal assembly not an ordinary assembly a royal assembly of the Vaishnavas international are worldwide now <clears throat> it is actually we can see it is common sense that we need a structure let us consider somebody builds a house and when he builds the house and then he leaves and all kinds of people just walk into the house how will they live in the house? Will they be able to properly live in that house? No. They will start fighting about uh, the proprietorship and everybody will try to grab as much as they can. Uh, especially in India sometimes we see that happens to uh, some properties where uh, people just make their claim and try to take over and government lawyers as such you can't really evict them. But what happens is that they're not, they don't really, they're just illegal uh, intruders in that house. And as a result of that, they don't care for the house. They simply care, they simply care for their own interest. And that they got a free place to live in. They don't renovate, they don't take care of the house. And within a very short time, the house just falls apart. Now if we consider that Srila Prabhupada built a house where the whole world can live 
then isn't it essential that we recognize who is the proprietor of the house? If we don't emphatically point out who is the proprietor, uh, then uh, we can consider what will happen inevitably. Therefore it is important that the house that Srila Prabhupada built, where the whole world can live, uh, we have to recognize who is the proprietor of the house. Uh, and in this institution, everybody must represent him. And in order to maintain the proper <coughs> functioning of that structure or the institution, Srila Prabhupada created the governing body. And it is the responsibility of the governing body to make sure that Srila Prabhupada's house is maintained according to Srila Prabhupada's plan. The purpose of the institution, uh, Srila Prabhupada has given the strategy um, and the plan for the functioning. What is the objective of this institution Srila Prabhupada built? And it is up to the GBC that they should they should execute Srila Prabhupada's plan, Srila Prabhupada's will. So in course of our discussion we, dis we considered the importance hmm, of these two factors in a proper functioning of the institution. Like when we say ISKCON, anybody can come and say that I am the real ISKCON. It is happening, groups of devotees are, so when they defect from ISKCON and they try to create something, then they say that our ISKCON is the real ISKCON and that ISKCON is dead. Uh, rather, this ISKCON is dead. They claim that. Uh, now, <clears throat> how do you figure out which is real ISKCON? So when I come across uh, such claim or allegation, uh, then I say, my point is that ISKCON is the institution where Srila Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya and the GBC body is the executor of Srila Prabhupada's will. That is ISKCON. Now if you can create a society, if this ISKCON is not functioning in that way, yes, you have a responsibility to create an ISKCON. To, see, to continue Srila Prabhupada's legacy. And the legacy will be continued by uh, establishing Srila Prabhupada as a founder Acharya and a collective body of devotees who are maintaining the institution according to Srila Prabhupada's strategy, according to Srila Prabhupada's plan. And that is ISKCON. Now when we look at that, when we see, we see uh, where we have that structure. And from that we can figure out where is the real ISKCON? Real ISKCON is the institution where Prabhupada is the founder Acharya and the governing body is the ultimate managing authority. And they are not also managing this instruction, the institution whimsically, but they have to manage according to Srila Prabhupada's Srila Prabhupada's blueprint according to Srila Prabhupada's instructions. And where do where is Srila Prabhupada's instructions? The books. Uh, Srila Prabhupada's books are the basis on which this International Society for Krishna Consciousness is founded on. Mm. And so this is how we discussed and then we discussed about Srila Prabhupada's position as the founder Acharya. Uh, like, what does it actually mean? Now, in a spiritual institution, the position of the founder Acharya is the pre-eminent Shiksha Guru. Is that of the pre-eminent Shiksha Guru. Srila Prabhupada is the uh, spiritual master for everybody who joins this institution. And those who become spiritual masters in ISKCON, they actually become so 
according to the authority that has been awarded to them by the institution itself so that means it is the institution that is appointing these leaders spiritual leaders therefore they must function as a representative of the institution or to be more precise we can say that they have to function as the representatives of shri prabhupad Mm-hmm. So they have to represent Srila Prabhupada. Now, when we represent, then what does it actually mean? Some I am representing somebody. Uh, what does it actually mean? Mm-hmm. So to to clarify the meaning of that term, representation, we can say, uh, say for example, somebody is representing Sony in India. so that means that he is the person who is actually through whom we can get sony isn't it hmm. if i want sony product then where do we go we have to go to the person who is representing sony so when somebody is representing shila prabhupad what does it mean he is representing he is giving shila prabhupad he is standing there in order to give shila prabhupad so that is the position of all the spiritual leaders of iskon now we don't we use the expression transparent via medium so that is a representative through him uh, he is transparent uh, through him we get the uh, personality absolutely clearly so if we want prabhupad we go to them and it is they give prabhupad to us <clears throat> now uh, then we came to one concept of a uh, preeminent shiksha guru or the founder acharya of an institution and the example we drew uh, there are plenty of examples like that like in ramanuja sampradaya Ramanuja Acharya is that founder Acharya. Uh, he created an institution which is named after him, Ramanuja Sampradaya. Similarly, Madhva Acharya, Madhva Sampradaya. So, in Ramanuja Sampradaya, uh, there are many gurus, many spiritual leaders. Uh, but generations after generations, what they are doing? they are actually ramanuja acharya is a preeminent personality and the gurus are taking their followers their disciples to ramanuja acharya and they have a concept in that respect is ramanuja acharya is a uddhara guru the deliverer guru and the successing the successors of ramanuja acharya are known as upakaraka guru the benefactor spiritual master So the benefactor spiritual masters are taking their disciples to ramanuja acharya and ramanuja acharya is delivering them that is ramanuja acharya is taking them to lakshmi narayan now somebody may say well that is a ramanuja concept we are not ramanuja sampradaya uh-huh. we are iskon we are gauriya vaishnava sampradaya but in order to establish that very similar point we quoted two verses from shila narottam das thakur narottam das thakur is telling that when will uh, i have the good fortune hmm, to receive the mercy of shila rupa goswami and he by his mercy uh, i heard from the saintly personalities that one gets radha krishna when will my lord and master lokanath goswami uh, who was his spiritual master so when will lokanath goswami take me by my hand and offer me to rupa goswami or take me to rupa goswami 
Now isn't it very clear? Lokanath Goswami, his guru, is taking him to Rupa Goswami and Rupa Goswami is engaging him in the service of Radha Krishna. Another verse from Nartam Das Thakur mentioned that very fearfully I will stand behind Rupa Manjari. Rupa Manjari is actually Rupa Goswami. Stand behind Rupa Manjari and seeing me, the transcendental couple will ask, Rupa, where did you get this new maid servant? And Rupa Manjari uh, replied that Manjulali brought her to me. So this concept in our Sampradaya is not novel or not unusual. It is uh, there. So similarly in our Sampradaya, our, sampradaya, our Acharya, uh, founder Acharya of the Sampradaya, that is uh, Iskon Sampradaya. Uh, in this Sampradaya, in this institution, for all the members, that delivering personality is Srila Prabhupada. And when you go deeper into this, st the st structure of the spiritual world, then you find that there are different groups and there are different group leaders. Like uh, Radha Krishna uh, has, there are different groups. Lalita Devi's group, uh, Vishakha Devi's group, Chandrabali's group. Of course, Chandrabali's group is conflicting with Radharani's group, so we don't have much to do with them. Uh, but uh, Lalita Devi's group is subdivided further. Like they have Lalita in Lalita Devi's group, Lalita Devi is the group leader. Her name, she is called Jutheshwari. Jutha means a group, and Ishwari means the lady. Mm. The leader of the group is Lalita Devi. And then there are, it, Lalita Devi's group again has subgroups like, uh, like one group is Rupa Manjari's group. Uh, and in this way, then Rupa Manjari's group again has subdivisions like her assistants uh, have her groups. And in this way, uh, it mm, has an unlimited number of individuals with unlimited number of group leaders. Now, Prabhupada used to say that ISKCON is there in the spiritual sky also. <laughs> what does it mean? It means that when you go back to the spiritual sky, we will find Srila Prabhupada is a group leader. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is a group leader and it is under Srila Prabhupada's direction that we will be engaged in devotional service. And, and that doesn't mean that because Prabhupada is a group leader, there, there is not going to be any other leaders. No, there will be subdivisions. Uh, there will be subgroups in Prabhupada's group again. Uh, and respective gurus will have, be the leaders of their group, uh, engaging their disciples in Prabhupada's service. Mm. So in this way, in the spiritual platform, everything is perfectly harmonized. Anyway, so these are the two, uh, these are the points that we covered in last two days sessions and uh, so last time we can, didn't have much time to invite questions and I think I basically covered these two, this main concept of Prabhupada's position and ISKCON and Prabhupada's role as the founder Acharya. Now, if anybody has any question, hmm, can ask. <laughs> yes, Suresh Prabhu. I have two related questions. Yeah. Do you want to write this? Yeah, please. <clears throat> uh, the first question is a kind of the first question is a kind of restatement of a question I asked you over breakfast a couple of days ago. And it relates to the, um, 
the relationship between shiksha and diksha. And I'm asking it again because I thought it would help all of us here. Um, is it, well, first of all, a pre question, I guess. Is it fair to say that the essence of diksha, as many think, is shiksha? The essence of initiation being the instruction. As Prabhupada himself said, when I met my spiritual master, I accepted it immediately, not officially, but in my heart. And then 10, 11 years later, he was initiated. So Srila Prabhupada's books, I'll try to get to the point. Srila Prabhupada's books being uh, the law books, the foundation, etc. So then many would say, or some would say, therefore, Srila Prabhupada is still initiating. He is, in fact, the current Diksha Guru because his books, his instructions are informing us of everything. This is where everything's coming from. So, isn't Srila Prabhupada still the initiating guru? That's the first, so please. Yeah. Yeah. Srila <clears throat> Prabhupada also emphatically pointed out that books are not enough. To reveal the books, the instructions, to reveal the instructions of the books, you need teachers. Mm-hmm. So you need a teacher who is going to explain the books to you. And the teacher is a person who has a clear understanding of what the books are meant for. Mm. So that is one aspect, that in spite of the books we need teachers. Mm. That is one aspect. And the other aspect is, you see the spiritual life is a process of surrender. and. That is why there is a need of formal initiation. That is through that formal initiation you are surrendering yourself to somebody. So this is the aspect of Diksha that has been clearly pointed out. Diksha kale shishya kare atma samarpan. At the time of initiation the disciple surrenders himself to the Guru. Shai kale Krishna Tare Kore Atma Shama. At that time, Krishna accepts him. Mm. So, if I can't surrender to a person who is representing the person, the, the main personality, then where is the guarantee that we are going to surrender to the main personality? Why does Krishna want us to surrender to him? Uh, well, through the process of initiation because Krishna wants to see that if you really want to accept my authority then accept the authority of my representative right now to say that I will surrender to Krishna but not to anybody else that means we are not really becoming surrendered mm. so this formality of initiation is a token of surrender Mm-hmm. At least one person. Ultimately we have to surrender to the entire community of Vaishnavas. But that process begins through the surrender to one person. At least officially we are accepting that here is the person I am surrendering myself to. Right? And then it is not that because I have accepted one person, that's it. No. As I make advancement, then my the dimension of my surrender increases. Uh, like, uh, first I surrender to one, then more, and then ultimately uh, I surrender myself to the entire community of devotees. Isn't that the sign of an Uttamadhikar? Let's see uh, the different uh, stages of progression in spiritual life. Who is a Kanishtha Adhikari? Who is a Neophyte devotee. The ne- according to Rupa Goswami, the neophyte devotee is one who accepts Krishna. He accepts Krishna as God. Uh, but he doesn't recognize his devotees. That's a mm-hmm. neophyte devotee. Ishwari, uh, I'm sorry, Archayam Ebaharai, Ujang Jashruddhaye Hati. 
নতদ ভক্তেশু চানমেশু সভক্ত প্রাকৃত স্মৃত হ্যাঁ হরে হি ওয়ার্শিপ কৃষ্ণ হরি পূজাং যশ্রদ্ধায় উইথ রেসপেক্ট উইথ রেসপেক্ট হি ওয়ার্শিপ কৃষ্ণ বাট হি ডাজেন্ট রেকগনাইজ নত ভক্তেশু চানমেশু হি ডাজেন্ট রেকগনাইজ ইজ দেবাউট ইজ হি ইজ প্রাকৃত স্মৃত হি ইজ এ নিয় ফাইট দেবাউট হু ইজ এ সেকেন্ড ক্লাস দেবাউট ঈশ্বরে তদধীনেশু বালিশেষু বিসু চা প্রেম মৈত্রী কৃপা উপেক্ষা যা করতে সমর্থমা ঈশ্বরে হি রেকগনাইজ ইজ কৃষ্ণ হ্যাজ গড অ্যান্ড টু হিম হি হ্যাজ লাভ টু কৃষ্ণ ইজ দেবাউট ইজ হি হ্যাজ ফ্রেন্ডশিপ to the to the innocent to the ignorant he has compassion and to the offenders he has disregard so that is a madhyam adhikari devotee hmm. but who is a uttam adhikari devotee sarva bhuteshu ja pashyat bhagavat bhavam atmana hmm. he sees uh, everybody as devotees of krishna and considers only he could become a devotee <laughs> so this is how the spiritual reality works we begin with thinking that i am the great i am the only devotee in the entire planet <laughs> krishna is god and i am the only devotee <laughs> but then as we make advancement then i begin to see well there are others also who are devotees of krishna <laughs> and then finally i see that everybody is a devotee only i couldn't become a devotee Hmm. so that is why you know the process the, the, the formality of surrender is very important hmm. so that is why the in, the formality of diksha is there and actually now le, let me also tell you one thing huh? um, it's a very pertinent question that's why i'm taking the time to uh, uh because this question is giving me the ch- opportunity to, to explain mm. some intricate points mm. actually chaitanya charitamrita says that for the sake of holy name of krishna of hari krishna mahamantra there is no need of diksha and there is no niksha need of purushcharya purification mm. is a diksha purushcharya vidhi apeksha na kari জিউ ভা স্পর্শে আচরণ ডালে সবারই উদ্ধারে দিস হোলি নেম ডাজ নট ডিপেন্ড অপন দীক্ষা ওর পুরস্চর্যা জাস্ট বাই কামিং ইন কন্ট্যাক্ট উইথ দ্য থাম ইট পিউরিফাইজ ইভেন আ চান্ডাল আ ডগ ইটার নাও দ্যাট ইজ দ্য ফর আই মিন দ্যাট ইজ দ্য ফার্স বাট জিব গোস্বামী ইজ সেইং অল দো দ্য হোলি নেম ডাজ নট ডিপেন্ড অপন ইনিশিয়েশন ওয়াই বিকজ He said the process of initiation was essential previously because his mantras were secret. Mantras, any, I mean, those days one couldn't just walk and start reading, get a book and you know, get the mantras, right? The mantras were kept as a secret. And it is only through the process of initiation that one used to get the mantra. The mantras were secret, Gayatri was secret, kept as a secret. But the Guru would give the Gayatri to a qualified candidate uh, in a secret way. Like he would just whisper to his ears so that nobody else can hear it. So without Diksha one could not get the mantra and without getting the mantra there was no question of spiritual advancement. That's why Diksha was essential. But what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra public. Gave it to, you know, anybody can chant. Huh? That is why there is no need for Diksha, formality of Diksha. Because the mantra has been given by pub- in public. But because, you know, the guidance and the process of surrender the diksha has been recommended now bhakti siddhanta sarshri thakur i mean you can read that purport of this uh, 
verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada also clearly mentions that because of um, these reasons, Diksha is essential. But Diksha is recommended, one can say. So, um, regardless of we're, who we're taking, whom we're taking our prominent inspiration from, if we're actually coming closer to Krishna, we're going to be surrendering to people, real live people, who can bring us closer to Krishna. Hmm. Okay, and um, the par- the parampara that um, Srila Prabhupada listed at the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, that's coming from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur list, the 32 names with Prabhupada as the latest one? No, that is the Bhagavad Parampara. That's not Bhagavad Gita's Parampara. I mean... Oh, that's, yeah, that's the, that's the par- line. This that's is the, the line. Yeah. So, um, so someone asked me recently, so if, if the Parampara is continuing, with us, subsequent to Srila Prabhupada, does that mean that, how is that going to, how, how does that work, just in terms of a listing the parampara, that means it's all of a sudden hundreds of names below Prabhupada, or, or is that list in the, in the Gita, is that just a list of prominent acharyas? Is that what that list is? Just Yeah, that's the list of prominent acharya, and that also, the line, is shiksha. Shiksha line. Shiksha line. Like for example, Bhakti Vinod Thakur was not initiated by Jagannath Das Baba Ji. Right. He was initiated by Bipin Vihari Goswami. Right. But the line is drawn as Jagannath Das Baba Ji Maharaj. Similarly, Baladev Buddha Bhushan was not the guru of Jagan, initiating guru of Jagannath Das Baba Ji Maharaj. Right. Similarly, uh, Vishana Chakravarti Thakur was not the initiating spiritual master of Baladev Buddha Bhushan. Mm-hmm. So the line is exclusively mm-hmm. a shiksha line, mm-hmm. and Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur actually drew the siksha flow, mm-hmm. not the not according to diksha. So that also indicates that it is a shiksha line. Our line, disciplic succession, is shiksha parampara, which is known as Bhagavat parampara, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and how this parampara will flow. Time will tell. But in ISKCON at least we know that everybody is giving Prabhupada. Because everything that we instruct is according to Srila Prabhupada's mm-hmm. teachings, Srila Prabhupada's books. So al- although the, we're continuing the parampara, there's no right. need to list any other prominent acharya, at least in our line. Why worry about it? Does the well, sir- people do worry about it. Yeah. No, I say they're wasting their time. They're wasting. Who is going to be the next, you know, prominent Acharya? You see, a simple point is, that does a servant think, uh, who is going, who is, who among us is going to become the most famous one? No, they don't think like that. They think it's, there's no need to even consider who's directly initiating now, because Sri the Prabhupada is directly initiating, and therefore, that's it. Not directly instru- initiating. Hmm. The initiation process, for initiation we need a living guru. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Initiation, shiksha can be received from, you know, someone who is not present. Mm-hmm. Right. Say for example, Rupa Goswami is a shiksha guru. Mm-hmm. No one will contest that concept. But if somebody says that Rupa Goswami is my diksha guru, mm-hmm. then yes, we'll have problem accepting that. Mm. So diksha is a bidhi, is a formality of rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. And the diksha guru demands that the guru has to be, one has to take diksha from a living guru. Living means one who is present. Mm -hmm. Of course, on a spiritual context, everyone is living. Right? Rupa Goswami is also living. But unfortunately, I can't communicate with Rupa Goswami. If I could, then yes, probably I could have taken initiation from Diksha, <laughs> Rupa Goswami. But until I can communicate with him, like say for example, 
like Vyasdev, uh, or Madhvacharya, got direct instruction from Vyasdev. Mm. You know, he Vyasdev is still present, mm. and he took the he took the instructions from Vyasdev. Mm-hmm. Similarly, Brigadi got the instruction from Narad Muni, or you know, there are galore of people you know who got instruction mm-hmm. from who had personal encounter with Narad Muni. Mm-hmm. This personality is still present, but for a ordinary condition soul it is imperative that he needs someone present to take diksha from someone present to surrender himself to mm-hmm. one last related point is mm-hmm. the concept of <coughs> uh, benefactor and deliverer gurus which you mentioned it really sounds close to ritvik the ritvik system that you know i the Ritvik and really bringing you to the real deliverer, Srila Prabhupada. So, what is it? Yeah, then the point will be yes, and take the responsibility of their spiritual life. Those who we are taking to Srila Prabhupada, take the responsibility becoming their teachers. Not just say that, well, you know, like I'm t- I'm, they are all belonging to Srila Prabhupada and I don't have anything to do. I can just do any nonsense that I want to. Mm-hmm. Right? But no, if you have to become a if you become a guru, then you have to follow certain standard. Right? If you want to become a teacher, you have to become qualified. Right? Not that I can do any nonsense and you know, like I am fine, you know, like and they're fine. I'm okay, you're okay. Uh, the, the problem in the Ritvik philosophy is, like as long as they say Prabhupada's position as a preeminent Acharya, no one will actually disagree with them. I mean, that's a very good point and, I mean, very pertinent point. But to say that Prabhupada will continue to initiate, uh, there the problem lies. Like, first of all, there is no scriptural evidence of such a system. So how can we implement something uh, as the norm when there is no evidence, no support from Sadhu, Shastra and Guru? Right? So that is the problem. On the other hand, you know, if you say, well, I am representing Srila Prabhupada and I am guiding these people, to take them to Srila Prabhupada, you know, I mean, it's fine. Only the missing link with them is that, you know, taking the responsibility to take them to Srila Prabhupada. Mm. So, and the other problem is, if I initiate and I think I'm the deliverer? Uh, first of all, a Vaishnav never thinks like that. A Vaishnava is always humble. He thinks himself completely unqualified. Didn't you see that in Srila Prabhupada, who is a Jagat Guru, who delivered the whole world? You know, what kind of attitude he took? I am nothing. It is my spiritual master who saved me. And he is going to save you all. I am not qualified. But my spiritual master is a pure devotee. Uh, Although I am useless, but because I am taking you to my spiritual master, you all are safe. On the other hand, if I think that I don't need the help of my spiritual master anymore, now I am the guru and I am going to do everything, you can consider the inevitable. Mm -hmm. So Vaishnava is always humble. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself is coming and telling, uh, coming as a devotee. Uh, He is not even assuming, he is even not thinking that I am the deliverer. Uh, He is thinking, he is saying that uh, that, uh, Krishna will bestow his mercy upon you. Uh, So that is the common spiritual mood. On the other hand, if somebody thinks that now I am the deliverer, 
I think he'll have a major spiritual problem. Because the transparency is lost. Then. Transparency is lost. Yeah. Rather, a, de a devotee thinks that I am hmm, unqualified myself. I do not know where I'll make it back to God. And how can I hmm. assure all these hundreds of people uh, who are becoming my disciples that they, I'll take them back to God when I do not know myself whether I'll make it. Isn't it? Or does a, de pure, devotee, does a pure devotee think that now I have become pure devotee so I can deliver the whole universe? <laughs> Rather, more purified. Now here again it comes to the same consideration. Neophyte, Madham and Uttam. Hmm. Uh -huh. And that is why Uttam Adhikari doesn't give initiation. <laughs> because he thinks that everybody else got Krishna, only I couldn't get Krishna. So how can I know, like, how can I initiate? Because they all, uh, when I do not have, how can I give it to others? And how can I dare to assume the role of a giver when I do not have and they all have it? Thank you. Thank you, Suresh Prabhu. There is a question in the back. Give him the mic. Hare Krishna. Uh, Srila Prabhupada speaks in his purpose about the division of the Guru principle. Chaitya Guru, Pranaksaka Guru, Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru. Uh, could you please elaborate about Barnaksaka Guru? What, what Guru? Barnaksaka Guru. But, but my production. Okay, yeah. Um, you see, actually, there are two types of Gurus. Hmm. Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru. But Dhatma Pradarsha Guru is the one who shows the way. Like the first person who brings us to Krishna Consciousness, he is the Bhatma Pradarsha Guru. Bhatma means path and Pradarshak means indicator and Guru. The Guru who shows us the path. Uh, so he is the Bhatma Pradarsha Guru. But in a way he is also a kind of Shiksha Guru. Mm. Although specifically he is identified as Bhatma Pradarsha Guru, but actually he is also a Shiksha Guru. Uh, and Prabhupada said, that Shiksha Guru can be many, but Diksha Guru is one. Because in the right path, in bona fide path, we just take initiation once. Mm -hmm. And then there are many Gurus who actually show us the way. But here also another interesting point comes up. That is Prabhupada mentioned that I am your Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru both. Shri Prabhu, are you familiar with that statement of Srila Prabhupada? Prabhupada mentioned that. I am a Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru both. And that is mainly because Prabhupada didn't want us to go out to take Shiksha from anybody. So those who are actually going out to take get Shiksha, uh, thinking that Prabhupada is not here anymore, they are making a major mistake. And Pro on the other hand Prabhupada said, that everything is in my books. Huh? Everything is in my books. And doesn't, don't you see that? Hmm? When you read Prabhupada's books, uh, they come, uh, Prabhupada's instructions practically dispel all our doubts. Um, <coughs> there's, a, there's a statement in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in which uh, Krishna Sarat Goswami says that one should not discriminate between one Vaishnava and another, considering him greater or lesser. What is wrong with using that argument to to say that, oh, well, Srila Prabhupada's great achievements is not uh, is not a require is not a factor to 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 establish his super excellence? Because right there it says that one should see all all the devotees, whether small or great, as equal. Yeah. This, you see, 
When we approach the scriptures, we have to understand that we are dealing with achinta, bheda bhed. Uh, simultaneously one and different. Hmm? The spirit of that statement is that recognize all Vaishnavas as being transcendentally situated. They are all Krishna's dear devotees. But that doesn't mean that we don't make any discrimination. Ah. We see a new Bhakta also as a Vaishnav and we see a Mahabhagavat also a Vaishnav. But obviously there is a difference between a neophyte devotee and a Mahabhagavat. Ah. Now to think that both Mahabhagavat and a neophyte both are on the same platform uh, is very unfortunate stupidity. Mm. Like will anybody admit that Rupa Goswami and a new Bhakta, uh, Bhakta Joe, <laughs> are on the same platform? What does your common sense say? So there you are. Mm. We see everyone as Vaishnava, but at the same time we see who is situated in which platform. Otherwise it will be impersonalism. On the other hand, the Vaishnava community recognizes the greatness of a Vaishnava with all due respect. But at the same time, therefore, in the Vaishnav community there is a consideration. Senior, equal and junior. Those who are senior to us, they are above us. Those who are equal to us, to our peers, they are like our friends. And those who are junior, they are an object of our compassion and affection. That is how the relationships are built. Yes. Give the somebody take the microphone. <clears throat> just uh, one, if I may, Maharaj, just one quick comment and, and two quick questions. I'll try yeah, to sure. keep my words as few as possible. Uh, the comment is uh, <clears throat> as far as the going back to that that rhythmic question sometimes it seems like we're almost approaching that mood in our glorification of Srila Prabhupada as mm. the, mm. actually as the spiritual master for the whole society mm. but there's also the factor of responsibility that even a quote unquote minor Diksha Guru will take according to Shastra he's still responsible for the disciple he has to come back or at least experience exactly. some inconvenience for the uh, uh, weaknesses of the disciples. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a Srila Prabhupada quote where he says, if I have some fault, so that maybe I've taken too many unqualified disciples. So those who are proponing the Ritvik theory at a supposed glorification and love for Prabhupada, they may be unwittingly trying to uh, create so much inconvenience to send generation after generation of more Diksha disciples. That according to Sashtra, he has to continue to take that. Srila Prabhupada has done enough. He's taken enough burden as far as that particular responsibility is concerned. So I just wanted to make that comment. I hope that it's agreeable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's a very pertinent point. Yeah. Um, uh, questions in brief. Uh, first one is uh, this idea of appointing that the guru is appointed by the institution. Uh, of course, we're not talking about appointment like going back to 1977 appointment or 78. I understand that. But uh, it still seems a little uh, clumsy that an administrative body would, uh, would dominate over uh, a Brahminical function which should be independent, just like Chanaka Pandit was completely independent of uh, Chandra Gupta. And uh, the other question in brief. Can I, can I answer this one first? By all means. It's, I'll take, go to the next point, huh? next question later. Otherwise, I may get mixed up. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it is, again, in a very pertinent question. 
but my response to that will be you see when one is functioning as a respond as a representative then the managing structure uh, or the highest managing authority of the institution has the responsibility to select a candidate according to his qualification and empower him to function in that capacity you see it is happening because you know that the individuals who are assuming the responsibility of a spiritual master they are doing it representing the institution right and that is why the gurus in iskon are under the under gbc in normal condition a guru doesn't come under any structure any any as you said like you know like how they would come under a body uh, under a managing hmm, body of managers so that is that's my response i mean if it is okay i mean i'll ask you is that answer all right for you yeah, as long as it's not misunderstood that the institution could make me a guru they could no. empower me that i already am naturally by my own sincerity right. say i've gotten to that point and then they could say now use your spiritual advancement within the structure of the institution but yeah. it's not that uh they could empower me in the sense that spiritually they're going they're going to elevate me by touching me in that way yeah that's actually, why that's why it is imperative that the gurus in iskon must function as a representative of iskon like i am not qualified but because iskon has given me the responsibility i am executing that responsibility on behalf of iskon and those who are approaching me for spiritual guidance my duty is to f- situate them properly in iskon so that eventually they can become properly engaged in shloka proper service and thus attain his lotus feet so that is that is the 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 concept but my consciousness has to be sufficiently advanced naturally and that is you know somebody has to judge like previously what used to happen the disciple used to select the guru right you know there was no since there was no institution or there was no structure it was up to the disciple to figure out you know who they want to accept as guru the guru would not say that i am now spiritual master right but you know like seeing a vaishnav you know being being impressed by his spiritual qualities a candidate would approach him for initiation and it was up to that vaishnav whether he would accept him or uh, not so that was the normal it was the this it was up to the disciples to approach a guru and but because you know we have the institution of iskon now it is the responsibility of the institution to nominate and or select some individuals to execute certain function just like you know ford motor company you know wants to wants a general manager so it is the ford uh, executive authority or the board of directors will you know see will select a candidate according to the candidate's qualification right so that it is it is a similar kind of a situation like it is not that the society uh, uh, since one became a guru we have to accept that he is uh, 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 he is what a guru is meant to be but on the per- we have to understand that the society has appointed a person to function in certain capacity on behalf of the society and recognizing that he was qualified and and rec- yeah so it is up to them to decide whether he is qualified and if that body sees that the person is not qualified then they can tell him that look you have to step down you are not really qualified you are not really functioning according to our expectation and the individual guru has to be submissive to the author line of authority 
I hope the, the, the institution will be sensitive enough to spot that before he steps up. So that's nip it yeah, in the bud. That is rather, there than, also. rather than let them step up and then when there's a disaster, now step down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you see, a sincere soul, what he would try to do is that he will try to improve himself. He'll begin with the understanding that I'm not qualified. But because the Vaishnavas are asking me to function in that capacity, although I'm not qualified, on because of their uh, goodwill and empowerment that I am accepting the responsibility. But in course, let me try to uh, try to become qualified, try to improve myself, to execute that responsibility properly. Mm-hmm. Uh, just quickly, the second question. Yeah, sure. Uh, I was taught that there are four Vaishnav Sampradayas, and uh, each Sampradaya has its own uh, resolution of the relationship between the one and the many. It's basically what it boils down to. And of course, the culmination of everything is that Achincha Beta Beta Tattva, which you mentioned. Yet at the same time, you're mentioning uh, Prabhupada or an Iskan Sampradaya. I have that. I have a little difficulty with that. Uh, I know you mentioned there are subgroups, but I assume we're still the, in part of the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, but we're the, the Iskan branch of that. You might say. I, I don't know. I, I just the word Sampradaya. I thought it was more formal and also a, a, had something to do with doctrine. And Srila Prabhupada, I don't think pretended to. Uh, to reinterpret or yeah. go beyond that. So that was my other question. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, there are four sampradayas, and there is a very special sampradaya uh, that is Gaudiya Vaishnava sampradaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu created a very special, you know, uh, say a very special sampradaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took two aspects of each Sampradaya and he created this Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. So all the four Sampradayas are actually merging. All the Sampradayas are merging into this one that is uh, Gaudiya Sampradaya. And the, in Gaudiya Sampradaya, yes, uh, it is Mahaprabhu's line. But what we have to see, where the line, where the real line is flowing, just to claim that I am connected to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not enough. Like on the first day we discussed about the Sahajiyas, the upper Sampradayas. They claim that they are Mahaprabhu's line, but they do not have any semblance or any connection to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his teachings. Now, this line had been revived by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And then it was furthered by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And then, when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's institution disintegrated, then Srila Prabhupada, from the ruins of Gauriya Mart, uh, revived Iskon. So, actually, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's line is actually flowing through ISKCON. The real line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually flowing through ISKCON. Now, who did it? Srila Prabhupada did it. Uh, therefore, Srila Prabhupada has a very special place in this Sampradaya. Just as say, Sri Sampradaya is a Sampradaya, but Ramanuja Charya revived the Sri Sampradaya in this age. Therefore, Ramanuja Charya has a special place and he and the Sampradaya is named after him or the line is named after him. Same with Madhva Charya, like Ramanuja Sampradaya, Madhva Sampradaya. Similarly, in course of time, we, it will become obvious how Srila Prabhupada is actually the revival, is the personality who revived Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's line and not only revived Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's line 
but he actually spread Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, fulfilling his prediction all over the world. And because of this incredible achievement of Srila Prabhupada, he will have a very special position in this Sampradaya. So, yeah, you have a question? Does it satisfy the, I mean, your answer? Right, exactly. Just like, you know, we have a Rupanuga Sampradaya. Same line, Mahaprabhu's line is flowing, but, you know, Rupa Goswami has a very special place in that Sampradaya. And that particular line is known as Rupa, uh, is named after Rupa Goswami. And in this way, uh, Srila Prabhupada is actually another such Acharya, you know, who establishes, who revives and uh, fulfills the prediction of the previous Acharyas. Pray your pardon. Prabhupada still remains Rupanuga, Prabhupada still remains Gaudiya, just as Ramanuja Acharya still remains the Sri Vaishnav. Right. But still there is a line, Ramanuja. Uh, similarly, uh, Prabhupada is Gaudiya Vaishnava, Prabhupada is a Rupanuga. But still, you know, of all the Rupanugas, you know, there is a very special flow of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. Yes. Hare Krishna. In, uh, in your uh, movie, Abhacharan, uh, I mean, not you, but under your direction. I saw that um, uh, Gauraki Shordas Baba Ali Maharaj gave initiation to Bhaktisant Saraswati and he spoke some mantra to him. And uh, I suppose you study some sources and it's interesting to know uh, which mantra he spoke to him. Yeah. You see, when one, when the Guru gives the mantra, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is, you know, is public. There is no secret need of giving that, but what he gave him is the Gayatri Mantra. And in our line we have the Guru gives the Gayatri, right, that is the mantra he received from Srila Gauri Shuddhas Bhavaj Maharaj. Do you know, Maharaj, who is the spiritual master of Gauri Shuddhas Bhavaj Maharaj? I mean, initiated. Initiating spiritual master? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, I have a second, so to say, technical question. Um, I remember that Prabhupada, he uh, told to his disciple, do not accept a disciple uh, in, in the presence of uh, a spiritual master. And uh, But now we can see in our society some, some Maharajas they start to initiate, uh, not, not many, but some yeah. of them. Yeah. You see, if the Guru gives the permission, then the disciple can take disciples. Hmm. And during Prabhupada's time, it was very, you know, Prabhupada's position in ISKCON is so prominent uh, that, you know, it was it would have been absolutely inappropriate to accept disciples in presence of Srila Prabhupada when the founder Acharya is present, you know. But, uh, therefore it seems that Prabhupada was emphatic about that situation. But in the Vaishnava Sampradaya there are, there are many instances when, you know, someone accepted disciples in the, when his guru was present. Hmm. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes. Ma Maharaj, uh, we can see that uh, during the time of the six Goswamis there was only one group. And uh, we can see that now today in Iskon there is many groups. Because you were speaking uh, in the class that uh, 
all his corn is going to Trosha Prabhupada. Then this many different groups, it is due to what? Is it due to the institution, the gurus, or the disciples? Uh, well, you see, when there is a structure, uh, this kind of groups are natural. Like look at the army, right? On top of the army is the general. Uh, and say under him there is a brigadier, right? Now brigadier has his group, right? Under the brigadier there is a colonel, right? He has his group, right? Under the colonel there are majors, uh, he has his groups. So in this way, small groups are uh, consisting of the entire army, but they all are functioning under one head. So to have many groups is not harmful or is not uh, undesirable, provided they all function under one head. Right? And that head is Srila Prabhupada. So with that one head there can be thousands of groups, there is no problem. But the problem will be uh, when these thousand different groups become independent and they start to function uh, according to their own uh, sweet whims. But, but sometime in India we see that uh, in some places is creating some, uh, some difficulties. Or well, I will say this difficulty, why there are difficulties? You'll see when the difficulties are there, when they are not actually functioning under one head. Right? Like say for example, Sony has uh, uh, 500 different branches in America. Right? But they all are un working under the uh, banner of S Sony. So that's why they are not conflicting. Hmm. But, you know, if each one starts to think that I am on my own, uh, then the trouble will be. So we can, in most cases you will find whenever there is difficulties, the difficulties are due, due to not really functioning under one structure, not looking at the interest uh, and the instruction of the founder Acharya. So for example, uh, as a spiritual master, if I consider that all my disciples are Prabhupada's property, and say, you are another spiritual master. And you consider that all your disciples are Prabhupada's property. Then there won't be any conflict, any problem. But if I think that my disciples are my property, and you think that your disciples are your property, uh, then yes, there will be conflict of interest. Another example can be given. Say, since I gave the example of Sony. Sony have 500 branches, right? And 500 bank accounts, right? Now when you buy a Sony product, Sony doesn't care into which account you are depositing the money. Isn't it? Because ultimately all are coming to Sony. But if the bank, the branch manager thinks that the money that comes to me is my money, then there will be trouble. You are giving the example of the gurus, that means the fourth is from the the guru, if he is thinking that uh, uh, I am not bringing my disciples to Prabhupada, this is mine, and the other guru is also thinking the same, that means he is coming from... I, 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 I understand it. No, I mentioned that whenever there, whenever there is problem, as you said, like different groups having problem, you will see the problem is due to that. Like, actually, even when Prabhupada was present, we had this problem. Do you know that? Huh? Because then the GBCs had their zones. Hmm? And one GBC from his zone used to think that uh, this is my zone and these are my people, right? And if somebody took his men 
away from his zone to his zone then they would get into conflict right why did you take my name but if they saw that well we all are functioning under shila prabhupan and everything is going to shila prabhupan like for example if one zone is having difficulties and other zone has the ability to help them in many cases they didn't do that they didn't help why because they were not thinking as one is going they were thinking in terms of their zones right therefore uh, it is important that we see everything we see that iskon is one body one institution and shila prabhupada is the head and with time we are learning you see when we are when devotees are young immature they make mistakes uh, but through their mistakes they are learning uh, at least i can tell you the way the situation was in iskon 20 years back I mean there's a big difference today you know like 20 years back you know we could dream of iskon like this <laughs> you know the way it is today you know i can tell you 20 years back i couldn't give a class like this <laughs> what to speak of a seminar <laughs> and who knows what's going to happen 20 years after so as long as the devotee's intentions are sincere Krishna will help. They will make mistakes. They will learn. And as a result of that, Iskhan will become stronger and purer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yes, Vrishyaprabhu. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Maharaj, as you know, it was a motive of mine in begging you to, um, or asking you to teach this seminar to... uh learn from you and to become qualified also to teach this kind of seminar so because um to my mind and this relates to Prabhupada Prabhu's question he used the word clumsy that it's rather clumsy or as we say in America tacky <laughs> to have an administrative body appointing or designating gurus so it was my idea that if we could proliferate these kinds of seminars that it would help ground everyone in their foundational relationship with Srila Prabhupada so that people could make informed educated choices about who they wanted to approach for initiation so um is this idea kind of is it um c- compatible with the GBC still you know appointing or recognizing who is fit to initiate cuz cuz um we've had a very checkered or, or sh- even shoddy you could say track record in in recognizing who over the long haul is fit to initiate many people have been disappointed betrayed devastated in that process as prabhupad writes i believe you can correct me that a guru was not appointed or recognized by some ecclesiastical convention rather what we find in our founder acharya's books is the mutual examination of prospective disciple and guru so um wouldn't these kinds of events be more effective in the long run for ensuring the continuation of of Prabhupada's mission than having our governing body appoint or recognize or however you want to put it gurus <laughs> thank you shri shri prabhu uh, well to respond to the first half of your question or comment uh, uh i would very much like to do that hmm uh because the more and more i am becoming aware of the need of recognizing shri prabhu's position as the founder of shri the gbc passed many resolutions actually gbc recognizes that prabhu is a preeminent shiksha guru for all devotees of iskon for all time 
Prabhupada is only person who is worshipped in, in, in a common Guru Puja. There is only one Guru Puja in Iskand. And that is Srila Prabhupada's Guru Puja. That clearly indicates that GBC is recognizing that Srila Prabhupada is the Guru for all the devotees of Iskand. And so on and so forth. There are so many such uh, indications, two very clear indications. But somehow the concept hasn't properly filtered down. Mm. And it takes time and we have to endeavor. But my problem is that I am so busy, and especially this year, you know, like I'm I'll be extremely busy. Um, this year, very GBC body very mercifully gave the responsibility to uh, organize the fundraising for Turley case. Uh, which means, of course, others are there also, but... So that will take up a lot of my time. I'm trying to complete Avajaran this year. That will also take up a lot of my time. But, but I will seriously consider uh, the point or the advice you gave me. <laughs> and now I will also throw a counter request uh, that you are also such a brilliant personality, such a senior devotee, you are such a wonderful writer mm, and such a wonderful speaker and such a wonderful teacher. So maybe we can join hands. <laughs> and if not this year, at least at some point, or even in this year, maybe somewhere we can organize uh, such seminars, you know. And in this way we can actually, you know, expand. Mm. And so that is the first response and the response to your second question you know uh, my answer will be it's not that the GBC actually appoints a guru in Iskand the way it happens is the local devotees uh, local leading devotees consisting of 10 senior members they actually propose some candidate for initiation because they see you know his track record his preaching ability his uh, how people are becoming attracted to him and asking for initiation so according to this need they make a recommendation and then GBC body actually circulates the candidates candidature and if not more than three GBCs object to that, it passes. Uh, so within six months, and there is a six months period, you know, that if anybody has a doubt about that individual, he can raise that point. So that is, you know, the preliminary answer to that question. And the second half, which is not really, hasn't been formalized or institutionalized, that is, see, if we establish the Prabhupada's position as the founder Acharya, the main guru, and the present gurus of ISKCON are taking their disciples to Srila Prabhupada, even though this present guru have some spiritual problem at some point, because the the followers have been indoctrinated with the understanding that they are actually approaching Srila Prabhupada. Even if the Guru has difficulty, the devotees will not be affected so badly. But the trouble actually starts, or the trouble actually originated from the concept that Diksha Guru is everything. Your spiritual life is solely tied up to your Diksha Guru. Your Diksha Guru is your deliverer. Right. And then when the Diksha Guru falls down, the devotees naturally feel that my spiritual life is shattered. I don't have any hope. 
the personality whom I thought is the most advanced uh, uh, spiritual uh, support. Now he, that support is not there, so what hope do I have? So this is how you know we can eliminate this problem by establishing Srila Prabhupada in his rightful position. Mm -hmm. And we see that also in ISKCON that devotees who in spite of the fall down of the Guru continue to serve in ISKCON. They are doing fine in their spiritual life. They don't have any problem. Uh, therefore, uh, it is very important that we recognize Srila Prabhupada's special position. So this this kind of event here is, is proactive. Right. Exactly. And it will make our governing bodies uh, job a lot easier. A lot easier. Actually. True. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm also looking forward to naturally because that's why I proposed. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Chandra Shekhar. Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna. If, if um, a disciple loses his guru, his guru falls down, and um, he doesn't take reinitiation, then does Srila Prabhupada have to come back to bring him back home eventually, or how does it work? Srila Prabhupada doesn't have to come back. Prabhupada is here. <laughs> Through ISKCON, Srila Prabhupada is here. Right? And whoever remains in ISKCON will uh, make spiritual advancement. And if he doesn't make it back to Godhead, then he'll come back and take birth in ISKCON again. <laughs> right? <laughs> and make further advancement until he becomes purified. 100% purifying. So there's no actual need for reinitiation for such a disciple? Well, I will say it's a personal thing. Mm. Uh, well, personally, I don't like to give reinitiation because I feel that link has already been established. And, you know, he is in ISKCON and there is no need for re-linking because he is already linked and he is already situated. But sometimes some individuals feel because, you know, previously that concept hasn't been properly established that the Guru is taking the disciple to Srila Prabhupada. Some individuals don't really feel firmly established with that understanding that he is linked with Srila Prabhupada. So he needs a help to become properly linked to Srila Prabhupada. And at times like that, you know, like uh, when I, I mean, that's why sometimes I am compelled to give reinitiation. Actually, la yesterday only I was talking to one devotee. Let me see if he is here. No, he's not here. <laughs> anyway, um, he wanted reinitiation. He has been waiting for a long time, and I've been telling him that there is no need, there is no need. So now finally, he actually, uh, you know, I agreed. But still, I was talking to him yesterday, and I was asking him, is there any need? Because you're already connected, you're already initiated, already situated in ISKCON. And then he came up with that point that he doesn't feel that uh, link with Srila Prabhupada and he needs the help to have that link, you know. So I asked him, I mean, I can do that as your Shiksha Guru. But because, you know, in the past in ISKCON we have set up certain standard, you know, it's difficult, you know, because the position of the Shiksha Guru hasn't been properly established. So, they cannot really relate to that, you know, like how, you know, what will be your special role in my life, in my spiritual life. So, finally I said, okay, you know, right. But I told him that 
I'm not going to change your name. <laughs> so, whatever had been your name, you'll continue to have the same name. So, in cases like that, I did give re-initiation. Okay. All glory is to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki.